right, I want to touch on this very important topic. It is the single most important topic in the world today, bar none. Let's listen to what this young lady has to say. Okay, y'all, this video is to share my quick opinion on uh, somebody asked me about what is, is it true that once saved, always saved. It can be and it can't be at the same time. And I'm going to tell you why. God sent his Holy Spirit to save you from destruction of the flesh. Correct. Okay. The Spirit is the only thing that's going to help you come out of the flesh. Because like like it's, it's written, the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay. If, if you're walking in the, in the Spirit... It's going to save you from the destruction of the flesh because you won't be dwelling in your flesh. You'll be walking in the spirit. Okay? But you can fall from the spirit. You can fall. And once you fall, you are not safe. You are not in the in the will of God. And if you're not in the will of God, you are not safe. So therefore, you are not saved. But if you are in the spirit and you're walking in the spirit, then you are safe. You are in the arms of God. You are in the hands of God. Okay? But you can fall from that. And once you fall, you are not safe until you repent and get back where you was. There it is. Okay, until you repent. So, to hell with Jesus. And he died in vain. You don't even need Jesus. You just need to repent. Repenting is the same as Jesus dying on the cross to cover your sins. Right? So... To hell with Jesus. All right, just forget about him and what he did. It doesn't matter. What you need to do is repent. And then you repent from your sin, and then you're saved. But you're only saved until you sin. And then after you sin, you have to repent again. And that's, the, that's greater than what Jesus did. You know, whatever. Forget about what he did. Just repent of your sin, and that'll cover your sin. Right? And uh, let's see. Let's take a look at a couple of verses here. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing. All right, well, okay, so that, that sort of conflicts with what she said. Okay. All right. Now, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. All right, so that's not a good verse. That, that sort of contradicts what she's saying there. All right, let's try another verse here. One's for a little, um, just trying to pull up some random verses here and see what they say. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Well, yeah, that contradicts what she says too. In fact, wait, just never mind. This woman has absolutely no idea what the gospel is. No idea. to emphasize that it's not once saved, always saved. God is wanting me to press hard on this t subject, okay? God was telling me to a lot of churches, if not all the churches, leave the physical church. Seek him in the prayer closet. Communicate with him in the prayer closet. That's the only way you're not going to get deceived, okay? It's, it talks about a blind person leaving another blind person down to the ditch, okay? Um... The ultimate goal here is to have everybody born again, uh, to receive the Holy Spirit, born again. Have the All right, so if you're born again, you are born of the Spirit of God. So John chapter 3, Jesus talks about being born again. And he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So once you are born of the Spirit of God... You will never die. All right? So once you're saved, you're saved forever. Have the knowledge and wisdom, so when then, so they can practice of a life of holiness. It's about practicing a life of holiness and not practicing a life of lawlessness. Okay, 
that is basically it's down to it, okay? If you're practicing lawlessness, that's the mark of the beast. If you practice life of holiness, that's the seal of God, okay? Alright, so if you're practicing holiness. holiness it's about practicing a life of holiness. It's about practicing a life of holiness. Alright, so let's take a look at uh well where should we go here let's see let me just go to well, I don't know, anywhere i guess um, matthew 7 is that a good place not everyone that saith unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven and to do the will of the father is what can I find a verse that might support that? Right here it is. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. This That's the will, is to believe on Jesus Christ. All right, so we go to Matthew 7, and uh, think about what she just said here. It's about so they can practice, of a life of holy practice a life of holiness. All right, so let's, let me give you three examples. Prophesying in the name of Jesus, that's living holy. Casting out devils in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, doing many wonderful works, practicing a life of holiness. Right? Just like this young lady says here. Have the knowledge and wisdom so, when they, so they can practice a life of holiness. It's about practice a life of holiness. Right? But then, what's Jesus say? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. So isn't that interesting? Does anybody even think about what the problem is here? I mean, it's obvious, right? To those of us that have eyes to see, it's obvious. These people were believing that because they practiced a life of holiness that they were saved. And they're not saved at all. Jesus says, I never knew you. That means they were never saved. It's not about what we do. It's about what was done for us. And do we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who has done it all? It's really polar opposites of one another. And can you know if you are saved let me see if I can find a verse and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true God in Jesus Christ whom thou has sent and let me see 1st John 5 verse 13 these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God and so we know we that are saved know we have eternal life we can't lose it you can't have eternal life and then lose it if you otherwise it's not eternal it's temporary right and um, so therefore we can be confident. Oops. Whoops. Don't be confident in me and my ability to spell or remember nothing, but we can be confident in the Word of God, being confident of this very thing, that He which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Once saved, always saved, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is no other gospel and without 
the gospel of once saved, always saved, it is impossible to have peace. Jesus says in John 14, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid.